Well, here we are at the rose farm, or at least what's uh, left of the rose barn anyway. It was destroyed during the battle. We're looking at some rock carvings here. Is a uh, looks like maybe E8 or E E H W 1888, July 19th, and H W S. It might be H H W. I think is what the the one thing said down below here. Uh, that's H H W. Let's see. We got a. They put up a do not climb fence here. That's all the. Oh, no, here's some here. R E W. Looks like. Makes me wonder if that HHW is the same guy that was up on Big Round Top. Because there was a couple of HH and I think an HW that I saw up there. Here's another one. Looks like HN... I don't know, I? Or an L maybe? Wish I knew who they were. You know, if I can figure out who they are, if there's any documentation that these folks have been identified, I'll include that later on in uh, some subtitles or something. That's the Rose House on the uh, Rose Farm. One of the trees around the other side there, probably around the uh, small stone building, is said to have what some claim to be a ramrod stuck in the tree. Of course, the tree would have been much smaller at the time of the battle. Uh, I've seen a photo of it, and it's, uh, it's a, like a thick gauge, could be a thick gauge wire or a thick piece of metal. Uh, maybe a little thinner than a pencil, which would make it about the right size for a ramrod. The question was, you can't see the uh, the head end of it that would actually be ramming on the ball to seat the ball, which means that would have to be either have been cut off or embedded in the tree. If it's embedded in the tree, um, the other end of the ramrod is facing the house. And someone on social media where I saw the photo had argued that it's facing the wrong way to be a, a ramrod, that maybe it's just a piece of wire. But if you're ramming a ball into the barrel, then the head end's going to be down towards the breech. So when you fire it out, the, uh, the threaded end, or if there were threads on it, would be the end that's uh, going to go through the tree. If it was able to pass all the way through the tree, that would be plausible for it to be a ramrod. Unfortunately, I can't get to it because the uh, Rose House has a sign that says it's still private residence. And with the horses fenced in, I can't get around the other side of the property. And I'm not going to trust Bass to do it. So maybe one day I'll be able to include a photo of that. Okay. This is uh, the base of Culp's Hill. And... Uh, right at the edge of Spangler Springs, these two rocks right here, which are, oddly enough, the only two that i found so far on the battlefield that are kind of offset from everything else that the Park Service actually mowed up to. And maybe it's because of stone walls right here. I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that the rock carving's right here. I'd like to think that it does. But like the David Atchison rock, I couldn't hardly walk to that because the grass was so tall good example of that I mean it's obviously it's a it's not the best time of year to be doing this but since David Atchison was buried at the base of that rock and that rock was carved so his family knew where he was or where they could find him and it's turned into kind of a memorial to that one individual that fought here would make to me that would make that rock just as important as any monument that's here and why the Park Service doesn't mow a path out to it I, I don't know I, I guess they've got a reason I'd kind of like to know what it is but Either way, let me uh, walk up here to the Kobel, A.L. A. L. Kobel rock, and uh, I'll chalk that in, I'll show it to you. Okay, here it is. A.L. Kobel, C-O-B-L-E, 1st North Carolina Regiment. Couldn't really see the one, I had to kind of guess this might actually be the one here, but I've seen it before in better lighting, and it was definitely 1st North Carolina, so, but there it is. Um, if the Park Service keeps up with their mowing practices, this is going to be almost impossible to get to. Because even with the path mode where we came in at, it's still difficult to get to. But the original path came in through there from the parking area. 
but uh, it's it's pretty well impassable now with the uh, tall grass and the weeds which largely is because the Park Service cut down trees in the area to try to restore things to looking the way they did during the battle but because they don't have animals grazing on the ground like they did back then and they don't mow it on a regular basis it's allowing the undergrowth to just take over and and grow rampant so in a few years they're going to have to come back and either cut all this stuff back down again or it's going to be nearly impassable in some spots but we'll move further up the hill on Culp's Hill and I'll show you a couple of more rock carvings moving up the saddle from the lower part of Culp's Hill to the upper part of Culp's Hill you come to this rock it's kind of a flat rock with a slope facing uphill to the crest of the hill, the, the highest part of the hill. There's actually two carvings on it. Because we're at about midday sun, it's going to be really hard to see them. So give me a little bit to uh, find them, and I'll try to chalk them in. I'll be back here shortly. I don't know. I can't find the other one. Maybe it was the date that I'm thinking of as being the second carving here. I don't know. But it says Leitner, uh, 1871. And the interesting thing was he carved the G and the N backwards. He or she, I don't know. But uh, we'll zoom in there a little bit. It's pretty cool. I could have swore there was another one on this rock a little lower down. Maybe down over here someplace. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I sure can't see it. And it was difficult enough just seeing the lightener and trying to get that one right, so... There's a couple more behind either that monument or that monument. And I remember chalking them in and photographing them, oh, probably 10 or 12 years ago now, along with Leitner here. And Leitner seems to me, now maybe again it's the midday sun, but it seems like it's a good bit harder to see than what I remember it. So I don't know. The other ones were hard to see then. So I don't know how, uh, how we'll do, but I'll go try to find them for you. Okay, here we are. Uh, I found them. Found uh, what's left of them. We're behind the 149th Pennsylvania, or I'm sorry, 149th uh, New York. Uh, you can just make out on the rock here. You can see the some impressions in there. It says something. I when I chalked it in several years ago, I couldn't figure out what it said, and. Uh, was just kind of guessing then and I took a photograph of what I was able to come up with and uh, it didn't really make any sense at the time so in the interest of putting this on uh, YouTube and, and having a public video like that I, I don't want to put false information out there as to what I think it says because I'm not sure uh, as far as the rock carvings go that's about it in Gettysburg uh, or on the battlefield here there's a couple other little Easter eggs that uh, that I know about I'll I'll try to go find them. Uh, we're going to break for lunch, and sometime a little later on, we'll come back and we'll take a look at them. So, uh, we'll catch up with you in a little bit. We're going to take a quick walk in the Soldiers National Cemetery here at Gettysburg. Show you a couple of things. Firstly, the uh, fence on the north, east, and part of the west side of the cemetery is the witness fence. Uh, that was around Lafayette Square in Washington, D.C. when General Dan Sickles, before the war, shot his, I don't know if it was his girlfriend or his wife, but her uh, estranged lover, I guess he tracked the guy down and shot him and killed him, and that fence was uh, on the side of the sidewalk where he did that. Consequently, Dan Sickles, during his trial, uh, was the first person in, I believe, U.S. history to use the defense temporary insanity. We'll take a closer look at the fence. We walk around the back side here. A couple of things to show you. Okay. This cannon is a smooth bore. Uh, it's a bronze gun. And most, if not all, the bronze guns that you see, the, the, the ones that look green on the battlefield, they're all going to be original. I, I haven't found one yet that was uh, modern or reproduction. You can tell the, the black cannons, the iron cannons, the ones that are reproduction because you look in the bore and the bore won't be it, it, it'll only go in like two or three inches and the bore will be filled up or um, basically it's not bored out is what it is but this cannon uh, near as I can figure when you put the camera inside the um, the bore 
with a flash you can still see something about midway down about even with the trunnions where the cannon attaches to the carriage looks like it still has a cannonball inside um, I'll have to switch to my other camera and take a picture of it with the flash so you can see it because it won't it won't show up on this camera and right next to this cannon the other cannon there uh, there's a dent in the barrel where it was struck by a cannonball so we'll take a look at that and of course behind it is the witness fence from uh, Dan Sickles uh, killing of his wife's lover and this tube here has a uh, dent in the side of the barrel where uh, presumably was struck by another cannonball whether or not it was an exploding shell or not you know who, who knows but uh, it's definitely a dent in the barrel from from something if you ever get a chance to walk around the uh, the grounds here the main monument is in the center of the semicircle and over here is the evergreen cemetery which wasn't nearly as big as it is today during the battle but if you can just see the American flag there on the other side of the witness fence um, my understanding Jenny Wade is actually buried right next to that or, or near there there's a statue of, of a woman standing but uh, looking at photos of where the Gettysburg Address was given I would say it was probably somewhere either right about where this fence is or somewhere someplace between where I'm at now and that flag because those photos it shows that it's it's more or less on the flat portion of the hill and um, I think some of them you can see the markers where the uh, soldiers were reinterred on the uh, left side over here in the semicircle so there's no real marker to where the Gettysburg Address was given but I, th I think it was on that level ground there's a um, platform on the other side of the uh, the grounds here where they give reenactments of the Gettysburg Address and that, that was not where the uh, location was to the best of my knowledge I believe the small white markers with the American flags next to them all the way up to the uh, mausoleum there I think those are all the graves that Elizabeth Thorne dug and uh, buried the soldiers here